Good morning, church. This text that he has just read in John 17, if you have your Bibles, I'm, I'm going, to, going to be there for but a few moments because that is where we are with our time this morning, and that's a good thing because we're family, and today you have heard a lot of very happy things that are happening, very happy opportunities that there are to be of service and to be helpful. So when you hear these words that Jesus is praying in John 17, I hope that they bring courage to your hearts on a Sabbath like this after we have experienced being added to the list. Yes, we are number 180. We are now number 180 of the towns in these United States that will forever be known as a place where one student takes the lives of others. 180. This is the Santa Clarita Valley. It is home to many and has been for many years and some are lucky enough to know that there used to be onion fields out here where that school, Saugus High, Saugus Strong, where that school is, there used to be agriculture. But now it is a place of learning. It is a place where our children have gone and will go again. But today, we need to hear from God as to how to go forward. I know I do. And as I was struggling, trying to think of what it is that we would need to hear from our Lord and Savior, our protector, I heard his words again here in John 17. This is truly the Lord's Prayer when we have looked at what we think is the Lord's Prayer, I like to call it the Disciples' Prayer because it's Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. But when Jesus has the opportunity to pray for us, for those who he has gathered together in this world, this, this is what he prays. For I gave them the words that you gave me, and they accepted them. This is Jesus talking about you and me. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. So my friends, the best thing that somebody can say to you today is that you are a believer. Now, if you want to tag on some other names to that, if you want to say, yes, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist believer, I'm a Methodist, I want you to know that there is only one name under heaven by which people can be saved, and that name is Jesus. And in this time of grieving, in this time we come together, if you saw the slide, it does say that Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in this town, there will be a gathering. I want to say that I'll be there. You can choose to be there too. You can choose to stand with people who have gone to Saugus. Uh, I know that there are uh, some graduates of Saugus in, with us today. Uh, where's your, is your daughter? She's there. She's at the back. She's at... Children's Church, yes. She's going to sing with her choir, some of whom were in the quad on Thursday, waiting for their time to be together as a choir. So it's a time of support. It's a time to hear from God. It's a time to, to hear that there will be questions answered someday. 
Verse 9 of chapter 17, I pray for them. I am not praying for the world. Now, you might find this a very interesting statement, but it, it, it struck me that Jesus, Jesus knows who has already said yes to him. Um, I told Brett and VJ that I would mention this today. Uh, Kayla's father-in-law is struggling at the hospital right now. He had a heart attack on his run yesterday. He's preparing for the LA Marathon. He's not a wimp. He's a strong man. But the question on VJ and, 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 and Brett's heart today should be the question that should be on all of our hearts. Is, is he a believer? Because, you see, if we are believers, then we think about this world differently than, than if we're not. And Jesus, Jesus is praying for his people in this prayer. He is praying for us, praying for you and for me. So if you are like me and, and, and you have many more questions than then you have answers today because of the, the randomness, the craziness of this week where we will never be able to question that young man as to why. Why did he choose to do what he did? What was, what was his motivation? Is, is there some way, I think we all as, as leaders, as people who are involved in education or in, 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 in service in some manner, we all want to know, was there something we could have done? I'm sure Jesus had these same thoughts. Is there something more, God, that I can do? I'm going to pray for those who believe in me. There are those who don't believe in me. And he says right here, I, I'm not talking about those. Because those still have to make the decision to believe in me. I, I, I wanted us to hear from Isaiah today because uh, of that opening salvo in, in chapter 64. Rend the heavens! Come down! Break through the skies! At moments like this, my friends, that, that's where my heart goes. I, I want Jesus to come and do something about this. He's not walking around like he was in Palestine those, those thousands of years ago. We know and we have faith that the Holy Spirit is walking amongst us, but we can't see him, we can't, can't feel him. So we still want to hear from him. And that is when we turn to scripture and it says, all I have is yours and all you have is mine. And this is verse 10. And glory has come to me through them. I want you to feel good about yourselves today. But what I want you to know is that the only reason you should feel good about yourself today is because you bring glory to God. You are the glory of God. On Sabbaths, you'll hear me pray, and when I pray, I pray for the fact that I am happy, I am joyful when what I have done, the way that I have lived, has brought glory to God. Amen. And that I am sad, and that I am contrite and that I'm sorry for the things that I do and say that do not bring glory to God. That's the line, my friends. And Jesus is praying for his people and he says, you have given them to me and they are mine and what is mine is yours and I will remain in the world no longer, but they are going to still be in the world. He's leaving, he's saying to his father. I, I, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm coming back to you, Holy Father. Protect them. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave 
me. My friend's name, as you well know, just means family. Plug that into uh, commandment number three and you really get the meaning. If you're going to say you are a believer in Jesus Christ and your life does not match that, then you are taking that name, you are being part of that family in vain. We come together at times like this and we say to ourselves, God, what do we need to be? What do we need to be to those individuals, to, the, to that young man who, who lost his dad? Sitting there watching TV and his dad has a heart attack and dies right in front of him. Did we just say, sorry, man, and then continue with our lives. While he actually ended, entered into what some would say was PTSD. And we didn't know. Could that be a, a, a possible thing? I mean, this kind of horrific stuff is happening. People are in, 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 in running down the road preparing for a marathon at one moment. And the very next they have a heart attack. And they're in the hospital in ICU fighting for their lives. And the doctors don't know how much of their brain is left. That is, that, that is going to change the history of that family. And the question that I have for us today is, as Jesus is speaking to us about how he feels about us today, how do we feel about our fellow uh, uh, Santa Claritans today? And I don't mean just because of Thursday. I mean because of every day. Because it's not just Thursday that brings uh, difficult moments and difficult times into people's lives. It's every day. Every day. It's something that my wife and I even say to each other. We use that phrase, every day. Because it seems that, that in these times, my friends, that it's not just a... It's not an uncommon occurrence. It's an everyday occurrence that people's lives are being changed dramatically. And their opportunity then to know the Jesus that you and I know and hold dear, that opportunity is snuffed out. So as, uh, as, as we were hearing the lesson this morning uh, from our brother uh, when he talked about the fact that we long for Jesus to come, I want you to know that there's a good part of me that also says, I want Jesus to walk with me, as our song said today. I want Jesus to walk with me now. I want him to walk with me now because I need to know, I need to know how I can help him with what he is doing now because there are people who are hurting. There are people who need to know him and that he is the way out no matter what happens to them. He is the way to the future and that if I am not involved in that, then he's, he's not really needing me. He's not really, not really needing me what I have to offer if it's not involved with what he's doing. While I was with them, he says in verse 12, I protected them and kept them safe by the name that you gave me. My friends, he is keeping us safe and he will do whatever it takes to keep us and our souls safe. I, I, I'm, I'm thankful for the first responders. I think the, the story is going to come out. Those dads, God bless them, dropping their own kids off at school, hearing, hearing the noise that they do not want to hear in their neighborhood next to their children and not fainting from, but running towards the danger. The question, the question comes to me, am, am, am I that kind of Christian? Am I that kind of, of helper of Jesus and his family? And, and by family, I mean the human family. Am I the person who, who, when I see someone in need, yes, they fell in the parking lot. Thank you, sister. That was a great story for our children. When they fall in the parking lot, do I say, oh, somebody else will take care of them? 
or do I go to their aid? This is a world, my friends, where, where we're going to need to be more compassionate. We're going to need to be uh, thinking about our next door neighbors and, and, and our friends because uh, it could be us. It, it could be us that has the need and they're going to be the ones helping us. But if they're the ones that need help, then the question is how? How can we help? How can we help? How can we be that kind of person that is helpful to the kingdom of God? While I was with them, verse 12, I, 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 I protected them and I kept them safe by that name that you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction. So that scripture would be fulfilled. And in that way, he was talking about Judas. Jesus loved Judas. I want you to know that. It was a very painful thing for him to live with Judas, knowing that it would be Judas. And he tried. He tried very hard with Judas. But Judas would not change his mind. Judas had an idea, by the way, of making Jesus do what he wanted Jesus to do. That's why he betrayed him. I want Jesus, instead of singing, I want Jesus to walk with me, he sang, I want Jesus to do what I want him to do. I want him to follow my political agenda. He went out into the night and, and the, the God of heaven was, was crucified on that tree. And Judas realized that he had betrayed he had betrayed his, his God and his Savior. And there was no coming back from that. In his mind, there was no coming back from that. Peter, Peter did the same thing, remember? <laughs> he, he, also, he also denied. I mean, a moment before, he had slashed the ear off the servant. And, and, and within, within minutes of, of doing that and watching Jesus, the creator God, take that ear and put it back on that head, you've got to ask yourself, why was it the ear? Well, just, just do this. And then you know where the sword went and why it was not the ear that he was aiming for. And it's moments after that that when he's around that fire in that courtyard and people are saying, oh, you, you, you are with the Galilean. Your accent. You know, I know all about accents. Believe me. You were, you were one of them. Oh, no, no. And then he starts swearing. And I'm sure being a fisherman, he knew a thing or two about swearing. So it is amazing to me that in this moment in John 17, we hear Jesus and he is praying for those people. And he is saying, I have kept them safe, all of them except the one that was not going to be willing. And he was the one that walked away. It wasn't because I didn't love him, but he walked away. I am coming to you now, verse 13, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy. And this is what I want to leave you with today. In the midst of sorrow, in the midst of the sadness that is weighing down my heart and is obviously weighing down so many other hearts today, not only about our situation, but about the situation that we find ourselves in this world where we are raising our children or attempting to raise our children in the fear of God. But that sadness can be interrupted. It can be interrupted by the joy of the Lord, the joy that is a gift. Let me, let me make that distinction for you this morning. It's not happiness that I'm talking about. We think that Happiness is the opposite of sadness. And yes, if you leave God out of it, yes, it is. 
But there is something that happens in the midst of us who fear the living God that we can have joy. We can have this gift from God that says it's going to be okay on that great getting up morning. It's going to be okay. He is going to put this right. But in the meantime, he is requesting that we trust him and that we lean upon him and that we ask him for the direction that we should go. And friends, when we, when we live this joy, I believe that we will be the pilgrims. We will be the pilgrims that Jesus can use to invite more and more and more people to walk with him in this world. Amen.